Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Trans Trucking Talk. Today we're going to be talking about dysphoria. It's kind of a rough topic so it's not going to be the most positive video ever. Um, I just wanted to warn everyone beforehand. Um, today we're delivering fertilizer from Sam Simon to Camp Verde. I'm probably butchering those. I've already been told I've butchered some. I, I do not live in Arizona or anywhere near it, so I have not had experience with it. Um, so we're going to get started here. Okay, let's just have a look at our surroundings. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, there's the back of our cab. Let's. We need to go this way, so let's get going here. So dysphoria is a thing that a lot of trans people experience. Um, for me personally it's sort of a disconnect between my body and my brain um, there are parts of my body that I feel shouldn't be there and parts I feel I'm missing and I get a lot of dysphoria from that um, you can also get dysphoria from your voice uh, which is what this series is hopefully going to help with it's going to serve as a place to practice my voice and to hopefully get better at it. Um, where the hell are we going here? Uh, straight ahead. Okay. Sorry, that was just confusing me for a second. And we're going straight ahead here as well. So, for me, a lot of dysphoria revolves around the first part of having parts that you don't think you should have and feeling like you should have some other parts um, so for example like the ability to grow a beard um, that isn't a big one for me personally but it can be for a lot of trans women and the lack of for a lot of trans men um, also things like having an Adam's apple that and various other secondary sex characteristics and then obviously things like genitals not matching up to what you feel like they should be. Um, that's recently been one of the biggest sources of dysphoria for me, uh, although my blockers and medication have eased that somewhat. Um, it's reduced the function of my genitals, which has honestly greatly helped. It's been, it means for me that they feel like they're a lot less in the way. Um, and having your own body feel in the way of you is not a pleasant, not a pleasant feeling at all. So, um, I'm, yeah, so for me, the next big thing I want to change about my body is to undergo, uh, sex, uh, I think it's still called SRS over here, which is sex reassignment surgery. It's bottom surgery on your genitals and um, I'll probably get a vaginoplasty done. Um, there are a few different methods of doing it but this involves taking the skin and tissue from around the genitals and changing that from a penis into a vagina and it's been I, it's been available for a long time it's so the surgery for trans women is quite advanced. Things like phalloplasty for trans men are a lot newer and sort of less tried and tested. Um, so they have an even harder job in that regard. They, a lot of trans guys are a lot more unsure about surgery because of that, from what I've heard and been told. So surgery is one way you can ease dysphoria. Other other ways include things like even just wearing clothing that you feel comfortable in. Um, I remember the first time I sort of, the first time I had a proper outfit that I considered feminine was a big moment for me. It, it made me feel a lot more comfortable and it was a couple of days after I had come out to my dad and my stepmom and I was living with them at the time. And I was wearing this outfit and they just said, 
you know, you look so much more happy and energetic now that you've come out to us. And that, for me, was a big reassurance. It meant I felt like I was doing the right thing. And I think it's something that a lot of trans people stress about is whether they are you actually trans enough and all this. Um, I took a while to accept the fact that I was. Um, it took me a long period of thinking before I even told anyone that I felt like I was trans. So having them say that, that when I wore feminine clothing for the first time, or specifically feminine clothing rather than just um, androgynous looking clothing, uh, they said that I looked a lot happier and more energetic and just better overall. Um, so things like that can help a lot with dysphoria. Um, another thing is voice training. This is what this series is for, um, at least in part. It's to give me a space to practice my voice on my own terms. Um, I figured I might as well produce something while I was practicing. Um, and hopefully voice is something that will help me with big changes as well. It's I have a very deep voice naturally. My mum is an alto singer and my dad's a bass singer so there was no way I wasn't going to be a bass singer but it's caused me sort of a lot of stress in my head at least that maybe I'll never be able to have a good voice maybe I'll I'll never have a feminine sounding voice but I'm trying to overcome that at the minute uh, that's part of what this series is about I'm happy with my progress so far I want to make more progress obviously but um, okay we are on the right road here just checking I wasn't really paying attention so um, yeah I'm happy with my progress so far on my voice it's sounding a lot more feminine even just in my mannerisms even if my voice is still deep and quite rumbly and doesn't have necessarily the expected qualities of a feminine voice my mannerisms are still helping it get there and um, quite often in public I, I'll i get um, called miss or a lady and that's really reassuring the first time I met up um, with my best friend in public after I came out. We, we were sat at a cafe um, and the, the waitress came over and said, would you two ladies like to order some drinks? And that was huge for me. I sort of, I didn't say anything about it at the time, but after we left the cafe, I sort of had a mini freak out with her about it. And it felt really good to be recognized and seen as feminine even though I don't necessarily look traditionally feminine or sound traditionally feminine. So that was another big step for me. Um, other things that can help dysphoria are things such as shaving. My facial hair is really quite manageable. Um, it's something that a lot of trans women struggle with. My facial hair is very light. It doesn't grow fast at all and it does it's very patchy so I can manage that without having to have any um, laser hair removal or electrolysis that's a those are procedures that a lot of trans women do go through if they feel that their facial hair isn't manageable just by shaving um, but that's something I'm glad I don't have to worry about because it's just something less that I have to do that can be painful and uncomfortable um, also shaving my legs has been a big help um, I, the first few times I did it it felt really weird but it's felt sort of really comfortable now oh this is a bit of a oh my goodness almost hit that one I'll just let this guy out flip an egg so, where was I? Uh, shaving my legs, yeah. So the first few times I shaved my legs it felt slightly uncomfortable, but now that I'm used to it, I love the feeling of it. It's... Um, we're getting low on fuel here, but I think we should make it. Um, yeah, I 
I enjoy how smooth it feels when they're freshly shaved and I personally think they look nicer on me. I'm not of the opinion that every trans woman should every trans woman should shave her legs. It's something to do if you want to, not because you feel like you have to. I did it because I wanted to first and that's definitely the right way to do it. Um, and now I keep them shaved pretty much all the time. I um, My leg hair thankfully doesn't grow too fast so I, when it gets to a length where it is starting to be more visible I'll shave it again. And that's about every two weeks at the minute. It's really not too bad. Um, Another big thing that can reduce dysphoria that is often overlooked a bit is acceptance from people in your life. I've been extremely lucky with my family. They've always been supportive of me. They've they've always they haven't questioned oh, but what about this or that or the other? They've always just accepted that I say I'm trans, so I'm trans, and that's a huge thing to have people accept you for who you are like that. And I think I'd be in a lot worse position, honestly, if my family weren't that accepting. Um, I know it's the case for a lot of people that their families either don't know how to deal with it or don't want to deal with it, and that's extremely sad it's I don't know I don't personally understand how a parent can say you're not my child anymore or anything like that because I was raised to love family unconditionally um, even if they mess up you still love them at the end of the day and it's okay and being trans and coming out as trans in my mind should be seen as a positive thing. You should be able to feel comfortable in your body. But some people obviously don't see it like that. And that can make it multitudes of times harder on the the person in question who's come out and then not been accepted by their family. It's it's kind of difficult for me to talk about because I obviously don't have experience in that and I don't want to appropriate anything or pretend like I've got it harder where I really don't. Um, we're turning off for this one. Yeah. Slow down a bit for this. So, but yeah, it's acceptance goes a longer way than you'd expect in feeling comfortable in your own skin when I told my family I framed it as a positive thing um, obviously that's I felt comfortable doing that because I was fairly sure my family would just accept me flat out from the start and I hope we can move towards a society where that becomes the norm but um, I sat my mum down and said, I've been talking to some friends, I think I'm trans and I want to use this name. And she just said, okay, do you want me to tell dad or do you want to tell him? So I said, I'll tell him, because I was going back to my dad's house um, in a few days time after that. And then, so I got to my dad's house, I sat him and my stepmom down saying, I've got some news for you, don't worry, it's good. And I think for me framing that as a good thing that I'd realized about myself was a huge step for me in self-acceptance. Um, if I'd have been, oh here's this thing I'm really worried about, it's really terrible and terrifying, I don't think, I think it would have taken longer to adjust, but because I set out with the mindset that no, it was a good thing I'm discovering this. It'll help me be more comfortable. It'll help me be happier. Um, that helped me a lot with self-acceptance at the beginning. Um, so acceptance from other people is huge in transition, but also accepting yourself. I. 
it took me a while to accept that I was trans. I thought, you know, maybe I'm just a slightly more feminine guy. Yeah, no. Spoiler alert, no, I'm not. Um, so, making the decision to decide that discovering that I'm trans was a positive thing has helped me personally a lot. It meant that I wasn't constantly thinking, oh, how do I get out of this situation, or how do I... Or, I didn't have a lot of negative feelings about it, I was like, this is going to put me on a path that will make me a lot happier in who I am, and while it may be difficult, it may be stressful, it may be painful, it may be uncomfortable, ultimately it's going to lead to me being a more authentic, more happy version of myself. And I was in a dark place when I came out as trans, and that was honestly one of the things that helped me a lot, was starting on my transition. Um, I was very depressed, I was very anxious, I had recently had to leave a job because of my mental health. Um, so being able to say, hey, this is part of what's up and making me feel bad, but realizing this is good, being able to say all that helped a fair bit. It meant I could get medical help in transition, which, as I've said in previous episodes, has been absolutely huge. Um, and we're turning this way now. Let's check nothing's coming. Um, yeah, it allowed me to get medical help and it started me on my journey in a mindset that it was going to be ultimately a good journey. And while it has been difficult, it has been uncomfortable, it's, I'm a lot happier and a lot more comfortable in myself now that I am a fair way into this journey. It's been well, it's been quite a few years now. Um, we have a joke. I have a joke with my dad and stepmom that um, my 21st birthday was actually my first birthday because it was the first birthday I had after coming out as trans. So um, this year, uh, next Tuesday, today is Wednesday, I'm recording this really late because I was really tired and slept in. Um, next Tuesday is my birthday, and it will be my fourth birthday as a trans woman, or after coming out as a trans woman. That's the important. Dis that's an important distinction for me. Um, we can talk about that in later episodes. Let's see where they want us to park it. We could play it safe there. That looks a bit more difficult. We'll just play it safe for now. I don't want to have a repeat of the first episode. For maybe sometime we will try parking the trailer backwards, but for now I'll skip doing that. Oh, let's reverse a bit. There we go. That's close enough for them, so that's good for me. So, this has been sort of a bit more of an unplanned rambly episode. We didn't quite level up this time, but we definitely will next time. Let's press continue. So that's been the fourth episode of Trans Trucking Talk. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.